Well, welcome to a new Harry's Farm video. And yeah, we're in a field of oilseed rape. This is the time when oilseed rape really gets into flower. We've got another about four weeks of flowering and I don't know, it just adds color to the countryside. I really like it. If you spin around that way, you see there's absolutely, yeah, I love it when there's a sea of oilseed rape like that, as far as the eye can see makes farmers very happy when they see that after getting this crop through the winter and all the tribulations with pigeon damage and all the rest of it. I have to say I am in the probably the better part of the field but this is the most advanced I just want to show you what's going on here. We'll have a look at some other things on the farm, some other crops and just discuss what's going on in the grain market and how it's going to affect food prices and that near the end of the video. But anyway, starting off with oilseed rape. This is the time when it just goes berserk and really gets going. It's had these two dressings of fertilizer have gone on. Uh, it's at full flowering at the moment and it will be flowering for the next sort of three or four weeks. And what we're hoping for is good pod set. Now it was a bit frosty um, a few uh, right at the beginning of flowering, but they all seem to be setting. So that's the very first pods just set in there. And there's very little sort of pollen beetle or anything really a little bit of disease but that's all but basically this is a very healthy crop of oilseed rape and it's probably the last time we'll go through it until harvest and then we're desiccated off but yeah the countryside this is the peak yellow it has to say is the next two or three weeks i'm really chuffed the way this crop's looking now next door is my winter barley which isn't quite so good Right now we're in the winter barley and it looks pretty good behind me but right where I'm standing in it's awful. Now what's happened here I think it's gonna be quite an interesting experiment here because this is this sterile brome I've mentioned in the past and we went along we tried to weed it out but this area we've actually abandoned we didn't even bother weeding it out and we haven't put any fertilizer on so this barley is actually grown with no nitrogen fertilizer. I, mean, I might as well keep it going for the rest of the year so you can sort of see what happens if you don't put nitrogen fertilizer on barley it remains sort of stunted like that quite sort of sickly yellow uh, green color but if we walk over here where we've put nitrogen on where you can see all the difference and here we are in an area where we have put fertilizer on now we haven't got the weeds here we did actually go through here with that hoe i'm really pleased at what it's done it has taken a lot of weeds out and it's remarkable i've only walked i don't know 15 meters and it's a completely different look the barley's got growing away tillering out i like to see i think that might be yeah there's two seeds so, that's, so you get you get a lot of stalks if you like from one seed i don't think that's one full seed it might be that looks almost too many but anyway all these will have um, a seed head on them barley um, horns on it when it comes out we've just gone through for um, with a fungicide i think there's rhincosporium a bit on there actually it doesn't look too bad so a bit of net blot don't know anyway that looks pretty healthy to me and barley at this time of year with a bit of heat and the nitrogen will zoom up this is this hybrid barley so i expect in two or three weeks it'll be up here somewhere but it's going to be really interesting just seeing how that area where we didn't put the nitrogen fertilizer on just how it develops compared to here just you know say 15 meters away a completely different plants anyway so that's what's happening up here let's go back to the home farm see what's happening over there now all the grass up on the farm at the moment hasn't got anything on it the cattle haven't arrived yet um, the farmer who takes this land is lambing at the moment and he's doing all that at his home unit so there's nothing actually grazing here but there's still activity going on and with just this field has always had a sort of profusion of dandelions and daisies everywhere and it looks just starting to get you know look like spring in a real picture and it's where the bees are and we noticed the other about a week ago the bees are getting very active and i guess this is why we've even got a hyacinth here so all, all, this tiny miniature um, great hyacinth there i noticed some speedwell earlier but mainly it's just the dandelions and daisies which is all part of a sort of british meadow scene where's a where's a there we are there's a speedwell so there's a bird's eye speedwell a little tiny plant like that just coming through but i think the dandelions and giving the bees plenty to do because they're all swarming around the hype 
But what I actually wanted to show you was the wheat up at the top of the farm. That's looking at picture and then discuss what on earth's going on with prices and all the rest of it. Well, this is the winter wheat down here and this is a pretty thin bit of ground. But this year, for whatever reasons, I've never grown better looking wheat than this. But there's a problem. Um, we've had two dressings of uh, nitrogen fertilizer on that. That gives it this sort of dark green look if you just spin around. Or it sort of looks thick, it's even. You want consistency right across the field. But this is where we had that disastrous oilseed rape crop last year and all the weeds basically took over. And this field loves to grow spring oats. And if you look down here, you will see they are all now coming up. These are the spring oats coming up and we've just sprayed them off. We gave one dose the first flush. This is the second flush just coming through. And we literally have been in this morning and I am got everything crossed that they will be hit. They're relatively easy um, weed to get out of wheat. The proof is, well, in a couple of weeks time when they've all gone on orange and withered and disappeared because they, they, it's, it's in patches in this field and it's really quite bad. This is quite a bad patch here. But this year, as you no doubt have I discussed in the previous videos, the price of wheat has gone nuts along with the price of fertilizer. And there's a lot in the news about the price of fertilizer. I mentioned it in the previous video, but from an arable farmer point of view, he bought, we all bought our nitrogen some time ago, and we're now looking for the Harvest 23 purchase of nitrogen. That's not so for, say, dairy farmers who normally quite often buy in the spring, and they are being hit with this very high price of nitrogen. But since I last did the video, the prices for, we call it old crop and new crop. So anything that you have in a grain shed right now is called old crop. A new crop is when we harvest the first harvested wheat. So we will harvest in August of this year. That is known as new crop. And I can trade now new crop. I could sell new crop. In fact, I did very mistakenly quite some time ago, nearly a year ago, sold some wheat for harvest movement 22 for 165 pounds, I think it was. If I phoned a grain merchant today and asked, how much would you give me for wheat off the combine August? It would probably be 260 pounds plus. So 100 pounds out. I've never sold wheat as badly. Neighbour, I was talking to him, he sold someone 180 pounds. They, they were big prices. So we're having a complete reset on prices for you know wheat, barley, oilseed rate. Oilseed rate, 700 pounds. I've never put over 400 pounds in a budget before and it's 700 pounds at the moment and it's a number of factors. It's not only Ukraine and Russia. There's a drought going on in the States. The crops aren't looking quite so good there. They've put up their ethanol um, percentage in their fuels. So that's going to take more corn out of the market and it's all a bit of turmoil out there and as an arable farmer 22 harvest is going to be good. I can see it's going to be one of those memorable years financially just because we, we sort of bought most of the inputs and the grain prices have taken off and it was completely unexpected. 23 harvest, another matter because we've got all high prices of inputs and hopefully, well, prices for wheat, they've moved about 50, 60 pounds in the last month up for harvest 23 because as now, as the Ukrainian situation goes on, there's an increasing realization this isn't gonna be over in a moment. So the whole world is having a complete reset on food prices. And the ones, is when, I've mentioned this before, I think being a farmer is too loose a term and it is very noticeable in this crisis at the moment. Because I say, arable farmers, we're sort of looking okay for this coming harvest 22, if you are a consumer of the wheat that I grow, like a chicken producer or a dairy farm or pig producers, they're having an utter mare because they're having to pay these ridiculously high prices that have come from nowhere. Even 180 pounds was a high price 
sort of at the beginning of the year. Now I can get, if I had wheat in the shed now, 300 pounds. And I was looking at an article in Farmers Weekly, an egg producer, and he's in an utter dire situation. The feed, if you are farming chickens for eggs, well, the feed is 80% of your costs. And quite a lot of wheat from here went for chicken feed. They like a high protein, clean wheat, goes up to near Buckingham, quite normal. But what isn't normal is a 300 pound a tonne for wheat at X farm. So he's paying, I think he's near a 400 pounds with, because it's a feed and it's got a bit more in it than just straight wheat. So egg producers, they're either gonna go out of business or basically the price of eggs is gonna to have to double. Same thing with milk. Milk has gone up to 50p, a, well the aim is 50p a litre, I think they're at 40p a litre now. Dramatic, huge increases. We're not talking about 5 and 7% and the government wittering on that inflation might be 8%. At the farm gate for these core products like eggs and milk and wheat and bread, double the price. That's what we're looking at as producers and what um, egg producers and um, pork producers etc need. There is support going on in the rest of Europe. Half a billion euros has been put aside for farmers over there. As an arable farmer, I am not looking for any support. That's absolutely fine. But these egg producers, dairy producers and pig producers, they need support. You can't just turn the tap off. Um, they need feeding every single day. They have no choice. They either have a choice of either going out of business or feeding the stock. It might be um, hens, it might be pigs or whatever but making a thumping great loss on the business and just hoping prices are coming down but I'm looking at the harvest price for 23 the prices aren't going to come down so the price of the producer has to go up or would they just go out of business now just going back to the arable side of things there's been a fair bit of chatter caused by George Eustace a DEFRA minister at the government for when there's been NFU been saying what are we going to do about the high prices of nitrogen and that's all linked to gas prices and we've been through that you know last video it's about a thousand pounds it's actually come down to about 750 pounds what we're going to do about it and he's saying we should use more organic fertilizer well that would be good but to grow a crop like this i need to meter it precisely the amount of nitrogen i put on and that's why we put the application there are ways around it lots of you suggested we grow clover etc in the crops they're all possible but they all will reduce the actual amount we grow, uh, the actual end product. And it, there is a case, and we're all looking at it because we want to reduce our reliance on nitrogen. But right now, to feed the world, we need nitrogen. And George used this idea, we we're just, if we're gonna keep the production where it is, I love this article in this week's Farmers Weekly, who's um, done better sums than me, how many hens we might need, how many cows we might need to get enough organic fertiliser to continue the output as we've got it in the UK at the moment. And the number is, if, um, using DEFRA's own documents, ignoring its rules about actually spreading it, we can deduce that replace all the UK's manufactured nitrogen room manures would require, for example, an extra two and a half billion laying hens and 10 million dairy cows. This would mean that every man, woman and child in the UK could have an 18 egg omelette washed down with five pints of whole milk every single day. It's not going to happen, obviously, but that's what's facing us, the reality and how reliant we are on nitrogen fertiliser and therefore the gas price, etc. So lots of big picture stuff still going on. I think Harvest 22 is done. It's looking OK. I'm slightly worried because the ground is starting to crack up and there's no rain forecast. But you think, I can't be calling a drought in the middle of April, but who knows? It's that risk factor that is well known to all farmers. You don't know what this is going to produce until it's time to combine. So what else is happening on the farm? Well, they're just finishing off the fencing up there. The stone walling is about to start. And I've agreed today for the solar panels to go in. So lots more to cover in the next few weeks. But I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, keep watching, keep subscribing. More videos coming along very soon.